for this morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity we have together, and Father, the opportunity to uh, just be here to lift you up, to worship you, to honor you, and, and uh, just adore you. Father, we just pray that everything we do today is pleasing to you. Father, we just pray that you'll be with those that we've mentioned this morning on about prayers, and Father, just continue to uh, do what you do in our lives. Father, we, we praise you for the good reports from, from Luann and from others. Father, we just pray that you'll continue to do your will in everybody's lives and these ones that we've mentioned, Father. And, uh, be with them through their tests, through their surgeries, and just continue to strengthen our watch over Especially this morning, Lord, be with us that we can just fully open our minds and hearts now and just pour out to you our love. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen.
uh, topics that have been penned by Billy Graham from the book Unto the Hills. The first one is called The Sacred Summit. Calvary is the summit of love. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. God commended his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <coughs> Scripture says that we are sinners. We have broken those Ten Commandments. We are under the sentence of death and deserve judgment. We deserve hell. The cross where Jesus died in our place and where we can find forgiveness is the only place to find forgiveness and have eternal life. Jesus Christ was crucified between two thieves on a road across in Calvary. Jesus gave his head to the crown of thorns for us. He gave his face to the human spill for us. He gave his cheek and his beard to be plucked out for us. He gave his back to the lash for us. He gave his side to the spear for us. He gave his hands and feet to the spikes for us. He gave his blood for us. Jesus dying in our place, taking our sins on that cross, is love. But that's not the end of the story. He rose again, and he is a living Christ. Christ is alive. If Christ be not alive, there is no hope for any of us. But he is alive, and the scripture says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, what does this mean to me? It means that because Christ lives, I live also. If I am in him, and he is in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And so by him doing that, he is worthy of our worship. Jesus Christ is he who said he is, God in human form. And that is a crucial truth that undergrids the reality of our salvation. Only the divine Savior could die as a perfect and complete sacrifice for our sins. Only the divine Lord could tell us how we should live. Only the risen and ascended Son of God is worthy of our worship and our service. We confess Jesus Christ as God, our Lord and Savior. During his time here on earth, he was God in flesh, true God and true man. He is from eternity to eternity. Jesus Christ, by his death and his resurrection, became the gospel. As his ambassadors, we must represent him all his fullness, totally and truthfully. Anything less disqualifies us from the high and holy calling. By faith, Jesus becomes our Lord and Savior. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. The present evil world system does not yet acknowledge his lordship. It is still under the deceiving power of the prince of this world, Satan. But those whom Jesus indwells has authority over the evil one and over his demons. The apostle John declares, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Therefore, in spite of our human limitations and our failures, the Lord sovereignly directing his own work of our redemption, and we are linked to the vast resources of his power so that we don't merely get by in our lives, and ministries, but in all these things we are more than conquerors through him. And as a context of that inspiring and reassuring verse promises, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. God can turn the greatest tragedies into that which is good for our good and for his glory. We know all, all things work together for the good that love God to them who are calling according to his purpose. Because Jesus is our Savior, he, is, he saves us from the penalty of sin. Because he is Lord, he, by his Holy Spirit, gives us power over sin as we walk daily with him. And some future day, he will take us to be with him, far from the presence of sin. Only because Jesus is God, and we have confessed him as Savior and Lord, can he bestow and we receive these gifts this blessed assurance and hope. So let us think on these things this morning and everything he has done and truly he is worthy of our worship. <coughs> this is the party. This is the blood.
you. We praise the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the jobs, the sources of income. We acknowledge that you bless us every day. And that those things that you've given us uh, are for us to be stewards of. Pray, Lord, that you'll help us to be good stewards of what you've given us. And as we, because we love you, bring back a portion of what you've given us in the form of tithes and, and offerings, we pray that you'll use that gift to further the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus. Especially in the work here, the outreach here at the New Old Christian Church, as we reach out to the community, and also as the mission programs to reach around the world. We ask your blessing to come and give, and we'll accomplish your purpose. And I pray, Father, that you will bless the gift in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs> what you see, right? Mm -hmm. Or see who you see? What was the purpose? We were trying to see who? Jesus. 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 Trying to see Jesus in us. Um, we talked uh, before that one about the temple. 
And we said how the temple is built, how we build our temples. Some of us have built our temples very well. Some of us have scrawny little temples. But we built this temple to house what? Let's to house Christ. Paul says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. To house Christ. So that He's in us, living in us, through us, right? Uh, we talked about Abraham a few weeks ago and, and his faith and how he let God shine through him. And we said, well, how many of us have that kind of faith? To walk to the mountain? Told you, maybe. To walk up the mountain? Less of us. To raise the knife? Even fewer. If any. And yet there was Abraham. Because of his absolute full trust in God, was willing to sacrifice his son. We have uh, last week the apple. The purpose of the apple. Sin. What were you to do with the apple? Get rid of it. I guess in any means, because some of you ate it. You enjoyed that sin. You devoured it. Um, didn't plan it. Didn't do anything. But some stepped forward and placed their apple on the floor. Saying, here. Uh, some handed me an apple. Uh, one, one man said to me after service, he says, here, do me a favor. Don't let me get it back. To get rid of that sin. And this week we want to talk about that, that part. The opening statement I want to share with you is, is a thing I put on my... On our Facebook, it says, May God give us the strength and the guidance to live so transparently that He may shine through us without us getting in the way of the light. May, may God shine through us. Now, what does it take to be transparent? That's what all these sermons were about that, that we reviewed. I've said in the past that, that we wear white robes. When we come to Christ, we, we accept Him, and, and He clothes us in that white robe. You know, when a prodigal son came home, and his father threw that robe on him and stuff, and with Christ, we're washed clean. Spotless. A pure, spotless white robe. And, and what does light do off of the white? It reflects. It, it shows. People can then see the light in us. But I've told you in the past that it's like when every time we sin, someone throws a mud ball at our road. And I want to tell you today that if your robe is covered in mud, it doesn't reflect much. It doesn't let much shine through or on it. But as we come to the table, as we allow Christ's blood to flow over us, that muddy, ugly, filthy robe becomes white as snow. And again, we are allowed to let things shine from us. And so today I want to talk about this, allowing God to shine through us without us getting in the way. Getting the apples out. Cleansing the temple. Do, doing the things we've talked about in past sermons. Looking in that mirror to see if we see Christ shining out of us or do we see ourselves. And so some verses I want to share with you. Uh, I'm going to say that the main verse of the day is going to come from Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 12 through 18. Philippians 2, 12 through 18. We read these words. Therefore, my friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but not much more in my absence, now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, 
children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine amongst them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on that day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. What is Paul saying there? What, what is he writing? What is he trying to tell us in that scripture? What? Surrender. Surrender. Give it up. Be in obedience. Do what he says here. The will of God is. If we are, if we are being obedient, if we're working on our salvation in Him, if we continue in Him, then we're going to what? Shine. Shine like what? Stars. How many of you are a star? How many of you shine for Him? How many of you... Look in Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter 4. Or Matthew, sorry, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. If you look there in verse 14, red letter edition, if it's, you see it, it's red. It's Jesus speaking and He says these words. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do the people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a light stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Okay? We are what? The light of the world. Christmas Eve. We had a candlelight service and we lit candles across the room and the room glowed with them. And the room glowed so bright that we turned all the lights off and the room was lit. And then you remember what we did? Remember what I had you do? Slowly, one by one, across the room, we, we put our lights out. Until there was but one light shining. And did you see that light? Those of you who are here, did you, did you witness that? I mean, you've been in candlelight services before, you've seen that kind of thing. And that one little light glowed. As I held that camera here, not a camera, candle here, it almost was like a camera, because I can still see it. Um, I can see your faces. One little flicker of light. One star shining. <coughs> we are the light of the world. And if people can't see Christ in us, will they see Christ? You see, it's, it's not your words. It's your actions. And you can stand before me and tell me that you love Christ. But when I see you the rest of the week, does the actions of the week prove the statement you made to me today? I don't really care what you say. I care what you do. I care how you treat the people that you come in contact with and what you what you do about them. I care about how you shine on them. Because you carry this moniker, this this word, Christian. And when you carry that word, and when you have that on you, and you have it in you, people look at you a little bit different. And I know over the last few weeks you've seen it. Tebow. You know the name, don't you? How many of you know the action? You've seen it. I mean, after his game last week, did you see all the guys that sit around the table that talk about the game afterwards, did you see what they all did? They Tebo. We know what that is. You know what that is? That's his light shining. 
He doesn't care what people say. He doesn't care what people do. He doesn't have to say much, does he? He just does his little action and goes on. And what does the world notice? The action. You don't see a whole lot written about what he's saying. It's his action. Should he be doing that action on the field? Should he do it? And people who are against it are very boisterous. They're out there. They want to put that light under a bowl. Let's not let it shine. Let's not do this. And, and they're not just doing it to him. Gang, if you wear that word Christian and your actions show it, people notice it. Listen to them. Listen to them. I walked into a, a, a store and people know me. I've been there a lot. I've been around and, and one man said, there's the holy roller. And you know what my response was? I didn't say a word. You know what my response was? <laughs> yep. You, you know the story right there. They see me all the time and I come in and this one guy just... I think it irks him that I'm a Christian. It bothers him that, that I have to go... There was a lady at the counter who was counting pennies trying to get her can of soup. And so I just, here, threw a dollar and comes to here. And the man asked the question, why would you do that? Because I can? Why wouldn't you do it? You know, when you do that action, when you do that for somebody, you teva. You shine. You were a star. You were the light of the world. You were a candle on the lampstand. You were all these different things that Scripture say you are. You're different. I mean, I love the Scripture that says we're in the world, but we're not of it. And if you understand that Scripture, we're to be totally different. Mike goes downtown and he helps out with the homeless. He feeds them. He, he does some things. That, and you guys know Mike. And I'm going to talk about him. Sometimes Mike is a... How would you say it, Mike? You're out there? You just show it, don't you? And, and sometimes we... Not just Mike, me, sometimes you, sometimes other of us, instead of just showing it, instead of Showing how much you love them. I mean, people don't care how much you say you love them. They care how much you show you love them. And sometimes we're so busy trying to get them to church that we force them away from it. It's okay to be out there. It's okay to be rambunctious. It's okay to let them know you're, you're a Christian. But funny, if you do that, your actions have to back up your words. Tim Tebow can say anything he wants and he has the press eating his words. Not because his words, because his what? His action. And we've got to be like that. We've got to be so transparent that Christ shines through us that when they look, they see it and they wonder and they say, what's so different? You know, Look across the National Football League. Look across the NBA. Look across baseball. Look across hockey. Look across all those different sort. Just look at them. I'm going to guarantee you something. There are Christians in all the sports. Why doesn't the media talk about them? Because they don't outwardly show. Because they don't shine. Because they don't put their actions behind the word. They're, they're Christian, but they're just kind of there. Uh, I got to meet Juan Pujols. Juan Pujols played for the... Uh, who? 
Cardinals. And uh, do you know what he's doing? No one. You know what he's doing? No one knows, do they? He leads. He leads over 600 major league baseball players in Christ. He played baseball long enough, got a name, got out there, started doing his things. Last summer, during All-Star break, he took over 300 major league baseball players who are Christian to the Dominican Republic. While they were playing the All-Star game up here, doing all the festivities and stuff, him and his, his players were down there teaching kids baseball in Christ. At the end of that week, they baptized over 500 kids. Because of his what? I, I'm guaranteeing you, you don't know his name. He played Major League Baseball stuff. He's a Christian, you don't know his name, but because of his actions now, he's on the front cover of Reach Out Magazine. Because of his actions, lives are being changed. Not just in the Dominican Republic, in Puerto Rico, in all the places they go. They hold they held eight camps this year, each a week long. At the end of each one, they baptize between three and five hundred kids every time. He says that we drive it into the kids through the baseball playing, that if you're going to be the best player in the world, you got to do it the way you got the world. <coughs> Because God gave you the ability and the talents to do what you do. I, I sat at lunch with Juan Pujols and Big Poppy and 13 other Major League Baseball players that I was sitting there going, <laughs> and at the end of it all, Juan Pujols said these words to me. He said, thank you. For what? See, Jesse was with me. He was at the band thing. And while he was playing, I was... <laughs> player. <laughs> and the neat thing about this whole thing was, at the end, one of says to me, thank you. I said, for what? I didn't do anything. He said, yes. They know who you are. And they appreciated this fact. I didn't ask a single one of them for an autograph. He said, you treated them like they were just someone else. And they appreciated that. I didn't do anything special. And here's a guy saying, yeah, we saw it. We saw it in you we, 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 just by the way you acted and did things. You know? And I'm sitting there thinking, hmm. Okay, that's, that's the way it's got to be. Our actions have to match our words. I can stand here and preach to you every Sunday, but if my, my actions don't match my words... What good are these words to you? If I tell you, got to get rid of the apples and I hold on to my own, then what good is that? If I tell you to cleanse your robe and I don't cleanse my own, what good is that? If I, I tell you to shine for Christ but I don't shine, then what good is that? So I'm asking you, do your actions <clears throat> speak for your words? Do they back each other up? Do people see Christ in you? Or is it just words? You see, because if I get out of the way, Christ will shine in. Some other scriptures that, that, that back up all this stuff is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 9 says, The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. The light of the righteous will burn, will burn brightly, but the lamp of the wicked will be snuffed out. Are you righteous? Do you see it in God? Is God, is God in you? Does He live in you? Daniel, Daniel 12.3 those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars that will last forever 
endeavor. Those who lead others to righteousness, those who lead others to what? Christ. Those who get it and share it. I mean, Christ lives in me not so that I could just have Him for myself. He lives in me so that He can shine through me. So that you too, so that they too might see it. And I, I held my head high that day, gang, when he called me a holy roller. I've never talked to the man. I've talked to a couple of people that he was with, but I've never talked to this man. And, and for him to be able to say, well, there's the holy roller. Obviously, he saw something or something. Man, that's... You know, there's the book out by DC Talk called Jesus Freak, where they say, man, it's awesome. Let someone call you that. That just means they see it and get it. <clears throat> we, we've got to be different. We've got to be out there. Not pounding them on the head. Showing them through the heart. Here's who I, here's who's I am. And here's who I think you need. Matthew, oh, we read all that, Matthew. Luke, Luke 11, 36. Luke 11, 36 says, Therefore, if your whole body is full of the light, and no part of it is in the dark, it will be just as full of the light as when a lamp shines in the darkness. So it will shine in you. Did you get that? If the light, if your body is so full of the light, if you are filled up with Christ, it's going to shine out of you. And no darkness can block it. That's what they're saying. No darkness can hinder it. Like that one candle burning that, that you can see the room. Doesn't matter how dark it was in here, you saw that light. Doesn't matter how dark the world gets, doesn't matter how far down the road we get away from God in this world, if your light shines, people will see it. They'll shine it. You won't have a choice but for them to see it and then wonder, what, what is it about her that's so different? We're not talking the looks. We're talking character. We're talking action. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed on the face of Christ. For the God who gave us the light to shine in the darkness made His light shine in our hearts so that we could shine like His Son's face. Now, the only story that comes to mind with me is Moses. Moses went up on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. When he came down, he what? Glowed. Glowed from what? Being in God's presence. From seeing God. And you read this, and if you are so full of light, if God gives you that light, we're going to what? Glow. We're going to show it. Help me be so transparent that Christ shines through me that I might not get in the way of that life. That's what it's about. There was a professor at a school. He taught for two weeks on Greek philosophy. <coughs> at the end of the two weeks, he asked this question. He said it was his ritual. Are there any questions? To which a student said... Um, What's the meaning of life? The usual laughter stirred through the room. The professor held up his hand and quieted the room. And he says, For you, sir gentlemen, I will answer that question. Taking his wallet out of his pocket, he fished into a little leather, into his leather billfold, and out of one of the pockets he pulled a piece of mirror. He said these words, he says, when I was a small child during the war, 
We were very poor and we lived in a remote village. One day on the road I found a broken piece of mirror. A German motorcycle had been wrecked in that spot and I tried to find all the pieces of the mirror and put them back together, but it was, it was impossible. So I kept only the largest piece that I found. He said, this one. He held up his piece of mirror. He said, and by scratching it on a stone, I made it round, and I began to play with it. And as, a, as it was a toy to me, it became fascinating that the fact that I could reflect light into dark places where the sun would not never shine into deep holes, into the crevices of the earth, into dark closets. So it became, it became a game to me to see what I could light up, to find out what was in those inaccessible places. So I kept this little mirror all my life. I would take it out at, in idle moments and continue to challenge myself with the game. So as I, be, as I became a man, I grew to understand that this was not just a child's game, but a metaphor for what I might do with my life. I came to understand that I am not the light or the source of the light. I am a fragment of a mirror whose whole design and shape I do not know. Nevertheless, with what I have, I can reflect light into the dark places of this world, into the black places in the hearts of men, and change some things in some people. Perhaps others may see and then do likewise. Then he took the small mirror and he, holding it carefully, caught the bright rays of the light streaming through the room. And he slowly reflected that light into the eyes of the students sitting across the room. Are you allowing the light of Christ to reflect off the mirror of your heart? Are you allowing God to shine through you he that asked his students. That is what the Beatitudes in our Bible is all about. God shining through us. It has always been God's purpose that when He entered our lives, He would be allowed to so fill our lives that He would shine through. That He would be visible in our attitudes and our actions and our speech. Christ Himself wants to be allowed to shine through through you. Just as a mirror reflects light, we should reflect Christ in all that we do. So that those sitting around us, those standing around us, those shopping around us, those playing games around us, those doing whatever they do, when we come in the room, they get that reflection of Christ reflected into their eyes. That they get a glimpse of Him through us. So this professor, he says, that's the meaning of life. <coughs> and he quotes Paul, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So I reflect Him in all that I do. Is that true of you? If we held up a mirror and we reflected you to everyone else, when it came across their eyes, would they see Jesus? Would they see the light of the world coming from you? Would you make a difference? Would they call you a holy roller or a Jesus freak? Would they know your name when it was mentioned? <clears throat> That's the question. As you sit here, do you reflect Jesus? We're going to give you a hymn of invitation, and in that invitation, it's your opportunity to, to decide. I, I can't decide for you. I cannot make this decision for you. You have to make it yourself. Do I reflect Christ? If I sit here and I wear that title Christian, do people see that in me? Or do I need to change some things? You see, we're in the world, but we're not of it. The problem with a lot of us Christians is we've become part of it. We've got to stand up. We've got to be different. We've got to let our light so shine that they can see it. Maybe you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ. You've never accepted the light of your life, so you don't have the light to shine. 
Maybe today for the first time you accept that light that you can have it in you and start reflecting that to others. Okay, whether the first time in your life or a hundredth time, you say, God, help me get it straight again. As we sing a song today, as we sing this hymn, make your decisions to be His and shine Him in all that we do. Stand and sing. Get ourselves out of the way that you can be all and in all. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.